So you're at the gym, feeling great and looking great too, I might add. That is until your favorite podcast ends. Now, without your headphones, you're suddenly lost in the wilds of Meatland. Don't get lost in the wilds of Meatland. Get the AAA Podcast Extra Content. We'll help you gain some fun times with our hobby addicts, after parties, and hentai episodes. Nothing gets your blood pumping quite like hentai, and nothing helps the podcast quite like your support. So head over to aaapodcast.com slash join or Patreon to support the show. Again, that's aaapodcast.com slash join or Patreon. Bro, sounds like you need a spot from the AAA podcast. I gotta use my announcer voice. Welcome to the 2021 Anime Oscars. With the biggest and brightest from anime, come to shine on the biggest stage in the world. And I am your host, Mitsugi, joined by two lovely hosts. We have Caroline donning a Versace black sequin dress. Caroline, how are you today? Oh, I am wonderful, Mitsugi. So happy to be here. And yes, this is Versace straight from the random dress place I went to at the mall. Thank you so much for that glorious introduction. How are you, Mitsugi? What are you wearing tonight? I am wearing a Ferragamo tie with the finest from Hugo Boss. These threads are 1,000 count, and they are feeling great. Thank you for asking. Oh, my God. And we also have Mason, who is wearing the spiffiest of bow ties, and I believe that is... Who are you wearing today, Mason? <laughs> I, I, I I can't even participate in this game. You said Ferragamo. I'm like, oh, that's yeah. my favorite flavor of pasta. Like, w- w- is that a real... <laughs> no, no, it's not. From the... <laughs> Oh, is that the is that the newest line of Prada men's bow ties I see? Wow. Ah, thank you. Thank you. The devil does indeed wear it. Uh, I'm so glad to be here, everybody. I was up till like 2 a.m. last night watching Rush Hour 2 and 3, so I'm all ready to go today. I'm definitely on top of my game, and, and I'm so glad to be here. And I was up all night putting away the 50 cans of Monster Energy I just received in the mail. So I am wow. drinking a purple Monster Energy today, and uh, we also have orange downstairs. So and when you combine those two flavors, they do indeed taste like shit. Thank you. And getting us <laughs> kicked off today... Well, we have a great show for you guys. Uh, it is very exciting to to go through the year of 2021 and reflect back on oh, our fondest moments. It is, uh, it's always a lot of fun, and uh, I appreciate everybody sticking with us for yet another year on this crazy podcast, and uh, it's just an honor to be able to do this for you guys. So um, how do you guys feel about 2021? Was it a particularly memorable year for, for either of you? Well, considering that this is probably the, like, that was the year that I watched the most anime because I was forced to do it because of the podcast. Forced? Ooh, strong words. Well, it's not as if I could have just said, oh, I don't feel like watching Realist Hero. You know, it was that kind of a year. But, um, you know, I, I it, was, it was definitely fun because I do feel like I know quite a bit more about anime than I used to. Oh, it wow. was an enlightening year for Very you. Education. You it was. It was. I I that. wept through the deepest depths of hell that anime has to offer. <laughs> what an exploration. You survived through so you survived Realist Hero. I survived X Arm as well. You survived X Arm. You survived Remain. The disappointment of season two of the Promise oh, the Neverland Promise that Neverland. broke my heart. Unbelievable. Yeah. All right, well. Um, and Mason, was it a particularly memorable year for you? I would say so. I felt like it started off very much a stinker year, and I was like, ah, this is just, I'm not feeling it. But there were some gems enough along the way to uh, 
when I look back, I'm like, you know what? This this year had some rewarding bangers, and I hope we get to honor them tonight. All right, indeed. Um, I'm I I thought it was a good year. I think that there were there were enough really solid anime from this year that it made it memorable. You know, there's so many anime that come out every year, and they can't all be winners. <laughs> you know, there's like your it's just like when you play like a gotcha game. You know, you're, there's your S class characters, there's there's your A classes, and then of course there's like E. Nobody wants the throwaways, but look, we had Attack on Titan technically twice, sort of, bookending that year. You know, we had we had Jujutsu Kaisen, we had uh, Odd Taxi, which was a super out of left field sort of crowd favorite. Two Year Eternity was great. Uh, there was a bunch of weird stuff. We had we had Wonder Egg Priority. Sunny Boy was pretty weird. So. Sometimes getting weird is pretty pretty good. I discovered a new weird anime from the 80s the other day that I will talk about on our next uh, What Have You Been Watching, but I won't spoil it now. But uh, it was a pretty good year, you know, all in all. So We talk a lot of shit, but when you look back at it, every year has its own like little little nuggets that you kind of carve out there. So. But, uh, and that's and what we'll we're be here. talking about all those nuggets today. That's right. We're going to find nuggets. Lots of dino so nuggets. So many nuggets. We are going to reveal so many dino nuggets for you today on this podcast when we announce all these winners. Uh, and that's what we're here to do. So we, we're going to announce the winner and the runner-up from each category because it makes things interesting when you know like how, by how much a uh, show won or whatever. Um, you know, we'll talk about every category as, as we go through this. And so, um, but first I want to talk about like the methodology that we use to, to do this because people are always wondering you know, how you arrive at your, at your picks or who the, who, who the nominees were. So what we do is we start off by letting other podcasts make their suggestions for what the best anime is in a given category. So uh, this year we had a handful of podcasts and some new ones actually nominate. We had Otaku Spirit participated, uh, the Nerddom and Other, and Other Nonsense podcast participated, um, the My Anime podcast participated uh, out out of context anime who we had on the podcast earlier in the year we had the uh the r anime podcast or aka tokyo Podfathers, helped us out with the nominations and so did annie vision so please uh you know rewind if you need to to check out that list of podcasts but make sure that you check it check them out and see what they have to offer for you because they did take the time to nominate for us and uh you know, they make this process possible, so, and um, they deserve to have some, some, some attention there, so, and then after people nominate, they, we let people vote. Now, you should note that only anime that had one season conclude in 2021 were included, so, like, Osama Ranking is not on this list. My Dress Up Darling might have started in December of 2021. It's not on this list because it didn't end in 2021. It's like, I don't know. And on the other hand, uh, we have Jujutsu Kaisen in here, even though that finished quite early in the beginning of last year. So yeah. Yeah. it's it's comeback. That's right. And so, like, I don't know. It's To me, it's weird to have a show like Osama ranking in the, in this because... You know, there are plenty of shows that start off being fantastic for the first, you know, 10 episodes and then they just it just crashes and burns, you know, by the end. And, you know, you don't want to be voting for Osama ranking as the best anime of 2021 when it could potentially be horrible by the end. And so it's just better. I to, highly uh, doubt. But look at we'll Mason. He's make, striking a pose with his. Uh, Chat with his, was asking if I had pants on. Like they his, already knew you didn't have pants on. I, that was a given. I am not wearing yeah. pants. I am wearing Tommy John boxer briefs at this moment. So they were not a sponsor of this podcast. So yeah, pe- <laughs> so people I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> yeah, people should know that. Well, you look so spiffy in, in in your in your new Prada line of men's bow ties. So it's just fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Top dollar uh, for you guys. <laughs> so um yeah so and then people vote so you know so basically other podcasts determine the the nominees and then people vote so it is ultimately you that are deciding who wins these these uh, categories so. And thank and thank you for doing it. I, I sound yeah, like I'm pandering right guys. now, but like generally, it's it's like oh, it's so easy. You just go online, you click five buttons, and you're done. But like it does take time to consider everything you saw and it's true. put in your vote. And we genuinely do appreciate it. The hundreds of you guys who just take the time to do it. It's this is nothing without you guys. And that's way when you guys pick the wrong shows, I can blame all <laughs> of you. 
and uh, get it off my shoulders. So it's a win-win. Well, of course, there's, you know, the issues with popular voting. Of course, uh, you know, Jujutsu Kaisen got a lot of votes in different categories because yes. everybody was watching Jujutsu Kaisen. Oh, yeah. But we do try our best to make it fair, for every, as fair as it co could possibly be. Uh, award shows are fun. Not exactly the fairest, but they are, are fun. They? And what we are focusing on here. I always think award shows are just where, like, quote unquote, supposedly important people stand on stage and blather about whatever they want to say without interruption for like 30 seconds. And so. then get played off stage. And you two will both be expected to fabricate a 30 second speech <laughs> for every winner off the cuff today. So I hope you're ready. Just kidding. Oh, oh that would be easy. fun. You could do it if you want to. But <laughs> I was kidding, though. All right. Well, <laughs> people okay, I wasn't sure. <laughs> people listening are like, get the fuck on with it. So maybe Actually, we should give them the hook. Yeah, give these guys the hook. So, um, oh, I see that the lights are dimming in the lobby. Oh, oh, and people are gathering in the the main auditorium with their fancy, expensive clothing and their cushy seats. And everybody in the audience is drunk today. So at least oh, yes. one person will throw up on somebody else. So, <laughs> all right. Well, here, let's get things started here with sort of the. Um, We'll say the minor awards. We do have some sort of like awards that are based around more of the artistic side of things and not necessarily winning a whole genre, so to speak. So the first category we have today in the in our anime Oscars is the best animation. So there's a lot of good shows every year that just look gorgeous, but ultimately there can only be one winner. And I will say that this category was pretty close. So should we go through the nominees? I will go through the nominees. We'll go through okay, all the nominees. Going to... We'll go through runner okay. and winner, and then are we going to take like two seconds to be like, "Well, this is what should have won." Go, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah probably. Pretty much. Okay. Pretty much. <laughs> so, so the nominees for best animation of 2021 are Heike Monogatari, Joran, the Princess of Snow and Blood, Jujutsu Kaisen, Maid Dragon S, Jobless Reincarnation, Skate the Infinity, Sunny Boy. There's a lot of these. The Ita, Den, the Ita Den Deities, No no, no Only Peace, Vivi, Fluorite Eye Song, and Wonder Egg Priority. It's a very long list. And the winner of Best Animation of 2021 is... Jujutsu, Jujutsu, Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> so much, so much amped up energy going into that one. <laughs> yeah. So with uh, uh, with 25.8% of the vote, Jujutsu Kaisen won that category, followed very closely behind by Jobless Reincarnation at 24.2%. So, And then everybody else was pretty distant after that. So what do you guys think? Did Jujutsu Kaisen, Shonen, did it deserve to get best animation? What, what did you guys think would win? Honestly, it's not... It, it is a good-looking show. It's just I feel like there was a lot more variety in the anim animation uh styles in the other shows that we had on this list. I mean, I am, of course, not saying that Jujutsu Kaisen is bad by any means. I'm just saying that it is uh, an example of the popular vote. Hmm. What did you think, Mason? I am not surprised at all with this pick. I personally am a fan of more weird, wobbly animation. So my nomination was Heike Monogatari, but half of that's because Jujutsu Kaisen was already nominated so it, it plays yeah. it safe but it does it well like it yeah. exceeds where it has to and if someone's like is jujitsu kaisen a bad looking shoe oh the answer is objectively no it gets the job done so i'm not disappointed by it i just am into weird stuff so it is, i'm yeah it is what it is i actually and thought that i sorry <laughs> i actually thought the winner would be um Maid Dragon, you know, it's KyoAni, it did look good. Um, it's what you expect from KyoAni, but as I look at the results, uh, Maid Dragon was pretty distant. So, uh, oh, I do have pie charts here. I, I, will, I will put the pie charts on the Twitch for you. If you're watching live on Twitch, you will see the pie charts, and uh, that will be very interesting for those of you that are just huge nerds about, like, data and stuff, which is kind of how I am. So there's your pie yeah. chart. Sorry, Caroline, I, continue. 
I had I had uh, nominated Joran. I mean, I think like a lot of people probably knew if Joran was on this list, I probably put it on there because the, the style and, and animation of Joran is probably one of the main reasons why I continued watching it to the end because it is a looker. It is is a good looking show, but it was third from the bottom. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I should I was expecting to. Yeah, yeah it's kind of sad. Like I don't know, Skate only got one vote. I, or that's got, crazy uh, or, or, or one percent no. of the vote one percent oh. skate um, definitely had a lot more going for it yeah it did and, and I, I it probably deserves more love it does and this is defined as style and quality i certainly think that uh that that skate at least had style you know i mean mm-hmm. it's i didn't think skate ended up being like a very i found that anime to be a little obnoxious by the end but i certainly think it had some very strong points to it and i thought that the way that it looked was one of those but you know, you can't win everything. What I find most interesting, and we do have a category in every single one of these for abstain. So if you have not seen, say, for example, a ton of comedy shows or isekai shows, like you could say, you know, I really don't know all these nominations, and you abstain, then that way you're just not, you know, going with the popular vote. That said, we had more votes for abstain than like Eat It Den or Skate yeah. and some other stuff. So. I want to know who was like, I just didn't watch any anime this year, so I'm just going to abstain <laughs> yeah. from animation. I don't know. It's, I, but I don't it's a know. good thing to do if you're if you're not sure. So, I, I feel like maybe people just aren't confident in their ability to judge an, uh, the animation quality, or maybe they just don't pay enough attention, and so they just punt. Fair. So, but that's Fair. fine. We do have an abstain category in every group because I don't. We don't want junk votes. So six percent of people threw their votes away. That's fine. We got we we eliminated six percent of just nonsense that you know uneducated voting. So that's pretty much our goal with the abstain category. So mm-hmm. and, and I think it's just funny that it. it was in animation. But yeah, anyway, well, yeah, it's in every. It'll be in every category. So. Exactly, including this Great. next one, which is uh, best OP Mason. Yeah, this award goes to the best opening song and visuals, the full package that begins the show. So who of these following had the best minute 30 of banging songs? The nominations are Godzilla Singular Point with the song In mm. Case by Bish, uh, Ida Ten Deities No Only Peace uh, with the song Seija No Koshin by Tatsuya Kitani, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen Vivid Vice by Huya Extended, My Senpai Is Annoying, the song Annoying San San Week by Futaba Igarashi. It was really hard to say that without singing the song right there. Uh, to Your Eternity with the song Pink Blood by Hikaru Utada. Vivi Florette's I Song by Sing My Pleasure by Vivi. Vlad Love, the song Winds of Transylvania by Love Bites. And Zombie Land Saga Revenge, the song Taiga Yotomo ni Naite Kurure by Franchocho. Franchuchu. <laughs> uh words why did i pick so many words to say the runner up with 14.9 percent is zombie land saga revenge sad i said that was my vote uh and the winner with 26.6 percent a pretty commanding victory yeah with its second award of the night is jujitsu kaisen with vivid vice <laughs> The music does not necessarily match the song, but there will be a song for everybody. Hey, yeah. it's, it's a vibe. <laughs> um, I, I actually didn't even remember this, what the song Vivid Vice sounded like, so <laughs> I don't know. I, I can't remember who I voted for. I, I, I do remember the Zombieland Saga song was pretty fucking good. So. God, no opening got me as excited as the Zombieland song of Revenge from the absolute dynamite song to just the visuals of them like on that like seven seat bicycle with the yellow with the signposts and them like swirling around and when it whipped to the Makba that like over rotated oh it was all so tasteful it just hit every time so uh, far and away my favorite of the year I think I uh uh, submitted Godzilla singular point because even though uh, at least Mitsugi and I were kind of confused by the entire thing, the song is a bop and I have it on my playlist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and I will say the uh, Edith and Deities No Only Peace, that one is also pretty good, even with the amount of naked girls are in it. <laughs> Why well, I got so many votes? Oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, Un- underground like honorable mention it wasn't on the list but the odd taxi op 
was yeah, I'm surprised super that we fitting as that. well. No one nominated it, but it was... I know. <laughs> I don't think it would have won, but it once again, it just fit the vibe so well. And listening to that late at night, just mm, tasteful. Another like, one that wasn't on the list that I thought about after the fact was Joran again, because it is, yeah, I, re I really like <laughs> Joran in part. <laughs> I think you like Joran half because you just enjoy it and half because no one else did that you're like, Maybe. I got to put this show on my back and <laughs> represent. Perhaps that, that is, that might've also played a part. And That's I, it. of course I knew nobody was going to vote for that one, but it, it, the, it was a good opening. Pretty much every anime in this category had at least a decent amount of votes, except for two of them. Um, Godzilla, I really got, only had 1%, and Vlad Love had even <laughs> less. So, the Vlad then, Love OP is good, though. Like, none of these are bad picks. No, except Upstain. That's not much of an OP. Yeah, true. Yeah, 14% Upstained. <laughs> that's so. the, that's the uh, we'll count that for uh, Jobless Reincarnation, because it didn't have an OP. It just, like, <laughs> did the credit roll. So, that's, Upstain is that vote, maybe. Can I just say that I love that they do that? I, I can't remember yes. if they did that. It in was the, good. I can't remember if they did it in the first season, too, but... It's like they you did. get another minute of like anime, and it's it, it's been done before in shows, but I really love how they just don't take like some stock, you know, thing that they created and just play it for you. Even fourteen times, you get to see something, you know, you get to see like them traveling on the land or whatever. It's I don't know. It adds it, it makes it feel higher quality to me, but but yeah, I agree. Jujutsu Kaisen was just a stylish show all around, so it's really not shocking. And also was uh, considering there was really no Demon Slayer that ended in this year. Clearly, the probably the most watched show of the year, I would say, if I had to bet. Uh, maybe oh, not. Yeah. There may, there's one other that comes to mind, which is Attack on Titan, but uh, yeah. Anyway, should we move on? Yes. To Best ED, which will be the category I present here. So right. the nominees are Abstain. Mm -hmm. Gotta love it. Yeah. <laughs> and then we also have 86 with Avid by Sawano Hiroyuki. We got B Stars Season 2 with Yasashi Suise, Suise? Uh, by Yao Sobi. Yo Sobi. You can <laughs> do it. Yo Sobi. Let's just go with that. Um, Evangelion 3.0 plus 1. How do you say? How, how are you supposed to say that? I call 3 it 3.0 plus, plus 1.0 thrice upon a time. Okay, let's go with that. It's obnoxious. Um, one one last. Call it 4.0. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Uh, and, and that song was One Last Kiss by Utada Hikaru. We got, of course, Jujutsu Kaisen, uh, Lost in Paradise. Uh, and that was by Ali, Al Ali uh, featuring Aklo. And then we got ReZero Season 2, Part 2, Believe in You by Nanok. Uh, oh, I can't wait till we get rid of these categories because they are way too hard to say. <laughs> uh, we got Shadow's House with Nai Nai by Riona. We got The Case Study of Vanitas with Zero by are you kidding l m y k i hope i'm okay um and then we got those snow white notes by or er, er, with uh kono yume ga sameru made by milaya M milia kato okay i wouldn't even have read and... the titles and the shit so i give you credit <laughs> and the runner-up for this uh, category for best ED is abstain and the runner up to the runner up <laughs> would be uh, re zero season two part two the winner of the best ED for 2021 is Jujutsu Kaisen Lost in Paradise nobody's surprised yeah I prop I don't think that it's going to be Jujutsu Kaisen the entire thing. It just so happened the first three categories is all Jujutsu Kaisen. And this is that just had proof that the people skip the EDs if we had more abstains than ever. I uh, mean that's true. Lost in Paradise was a song is unbelievable. I mean it, it was one of the better OP one of the better endings I've ever heard. So it, yeah. yeah, and it was I mean, yeah, that was really good. Yeah, uh, it got thirty two point six percent of the votes. It crushed it, and I think part of that is because even like non anime people I've talked to, like this is a super memorable ED, just from the style to the song. It just made you get up and want to dance. Like it had everything, and uh, I definitely see this coming. Honorable mentions. I, I cheated and I tried to get one last kiss on this list with Evangelion four because. Obviously, it's a movie, 
and we were like, oh, no movies allowed. And I said, I don't care. The way that they use <laughs> this ending song as like the final like note of this entire series just was so uplifting and emotional that I was vibing with it hard. Um, also, the Shono, Shonen Shoujo, the ending to Sunny Boy, even though the ending was just black screen credits, that was probably my favorite song use of the year because of the way that they changed it from episode to like other episodes. So, but obviously, as much as I want to say, oh, Jujutsu Kaisen is popular. Why is it winning everything? It deserved to win this. So I'm not disappointed. Mm -hmm. I don't have much comment to add. I mean, it's... Here, here, Yuki Sawano is usually exceptional, so I was I was surprised that uh, you know, not a very good showing there with only seven percent. So, but beyond that, I, I I'm not I. This was the most obvious category, one of the most obvious ones of the, of any of these, because Lost in Paradise is it it would have won in almost any year that it was in the list, honestly. So, you could drop it in any year and it would be in the top two probably. So. Yeah. Uh, moving this is sad. Like, and I never had a chance. Snow White notes never had a chance, and they're good EDs. Like, they're I don't know, I don't know. I just want everyone to feel good because they're all <laughs> someone voted for them, and I like them too. So there you go. All right, moving on to a category that does not contain Jujutsu Kaisen. So shocking. Yeah. So <laughs> best voice acting. So we will move. I'm going to move things along here on our on our live feed. There we go. Best voice acting. So obviously this is uh, best voice work by the Seiyu. The the nominees are Chika Hiro Kobayashi for Legoshi from B-Star Season 2. Kawashima Reiji from uh, who was Fushi from Two Year Eternity. Tomokazu Sugita who is Rudius Grey Rat's former self in Jabba's Reincarnation which is pretty wild. Uh, Old man Sugita. Yeah. Yuki, <laughs> Yom Yuki Yomichi, who played uh, Koguma from Super Cub. And Yuka Nishio, who played Dinka Aimoto from D4DJ First Mix. I've I missed that one completely. All the, all these last two shows are just like my bread and butter. <laughs> Super Cub, D4DJ. Everyone's like, what are the... They're so good. Yeah. I love them. I love them. <laughs> and the winner, very narrowly, the winner of best voice acting is Tomokaz Tomokazu Sugita for Rudius Grey Rat's former self, Jobless Reincarnation. I thought it was kind of a weird pick because uh, it's not even like the main character. It's just like the main character's inner monologue. But, I mean, it was present in the show for a, you know, pretty much every episode and uh i should note that the my pick for the my nomination actually for this was uh food was kawashima reiji who played fushi from two year eternity and that was the runner-up it was really close uh 20 22.4 percent versus 21.2 percent so only about a one one percent difference there and 30 percent abstained from this category. yeah so i could see that because it's kind of hard to uh to really have an opinion on voice acting when it's in a language that you are not fluent in. That's true. But I will say that even even despite that, uh, the voice actor for Barudius was had a very good delivery, even it, within that uh, language separation. I mean, it's Sugita. He's always like one of the goats. I think people just inherently don't follow voice actors and actresses as much as like, I feel like you got your entry-level anime fans that say, anime, I love it. I don't know, like, any details. Then you kind of dig a be bit deeper and you get into, like, studios and be like, oh, this is MAPPA, this is Bones. Okay, I'm seeing how those styles... And then you get into the seiyus and, like, really connecting the dots there. Whereas it's it's just tough for a lot of newcomers. So I get why people abstain, and it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Indeed. So, um... Let's move on to another category that also contains Jujutsu Kaisen. So it could be Jujutsu Kaisen's fourth win of the night with this next category, Mason. This is the best boy category, I believe. Oh, I skipped a category. Uh, what are we... Is that what we're doing? Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, best boy. I didn't matter. Okay, order, okay. Sorry. Gotcha. No worries. It, it has Jujutsu Kaisen, so you're safe. You're safe. No worries. Aha. Uh, and we will get to it. Um, the nominations are from Jujutsu Kaisen, Gojo Satoru, from Skate the Infinity, Adam, from To Your Eternity, we got my boy Gugu, from Odd Taxi, we have Hiroshi Odokawa, also from Odd Taxi, we have Imai Shun, from Jobless Reincarnation, we have Rudy, and from Blue Period, we have Yatora Yaguchi. So many good boys in this list. So I mean, I don't know about a couple of them. Boys. But... <laughs> uh, yeah, Adam's a little, a little handsy. Yeah. But and then we got Rudy, Rudy who's is a also little... a little handsy. <laughs> <Yeah>. Very handsy. <laughs> in fact, there's a whole shot where he's just straight groping some some girl. I mean, he's like, yeah. He's like checking well, her magic he can be power. But a boy, he's... when you're doing very uh, weird adult things. <laughs> the runner up for best boy. <laughs> With 22.4% of the vote, we have Hiroshi Odokawa. And with a crushing 37.4% of the vote and a runner-up in uh, Smexius Man in Anime AAA oh, yeah. podcast episode 500 and whatever. I, I don't know, 600? I don't know. It's 600. Wow, what year is it? I gotta um, check that. It's Gojo Satoru from Jujutsu Kaisen. We all knew it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he hit us with the uh. 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 Who, uh. who won that? Who 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 won our best our sexy band competition? It was that was Kakashi. Uh, Kakashi. Oh, the, okay. the 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 prototype <laughs> Satoru. <laughs> People should go back and listen to that episode. It was fucking wild. So that was rowdy. It was pretty off the. Yeah. Pretty unhinged. We said a lot of weird things in that episode. <laughs> Let me see. I check in the. Uh, that was episode number. Mm... Wow, I can't find it. I will. I will find it, and I, and I and I will let people know. Right, anyway, exactly. I'm sure you guys weren't shocked though to see that uh, Gojo shocked. won this. But I like Yatora from Blue Period. I I definitely connect with him a lot more personally. He is just so much more emotional, and he's just so driven and smart, and he I like him, and he's precious. A uh, runner-up would be a uh, last-second push-in would be Shige Mori from Heike Monogatari. He was also a very yeah. good boy. Uh, yeah, he was a good boy. <laughs> so. I, I would say that I am a little bit shocked that Imai got, like, two votes. Not, th not that shocked. But even more shocking is the fact that Adam got four. Are you serious? <laughs> This weirdo. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. I, I don't agree. But maybe everyone that was an odd taxi fan that was wanting to get that best boy vote, they obviously Odokawa got it. So yeah. that makes a little more sense. But Goo Goo Man, he was a good boy. I loved Goo Goo. He was he was my pick. I mean, I didn't think he'd win, but that was a really like a heart, really heart wrenching arc of that of Two Year Eternity, and I loved it. And mm hmm. Yeah. Oh. All right. Well, but you just can't beat Gojo. And by the way, um, the episode where we did the hottest men of anime tournament was episode six twelve. So that was not long ago. And yeah. <laughs> uh, people should definitely make sure they don't miss that episode. It was pretty insane. So. Mm. Yep. Okay. Shall we head into the next category? Sure, we should. Best girl. Can't best forget the girls. Best girl. All right. So the nominees for best girl is uh, Toru from Maid Dragon S. We got Hayase Nagatoro from Nagatoro-san. We got Hori Kyoko by, with Hiori Mia. And uh, we got Irina Luminesque. Is that how you say it, Mason? Luminesque? I don't know. By, from Iri, Irina, the uh, vampire cosmonaut. <laughs> yeah, I think you got it. I watched like four episodes of that show. You're okay, close. I wasn't sure. It is good enough we for got that show. Komi <laughs> and Komi-san. We got Mizuho from Sunny Boy, Roxy from Mushoku Tensei, we got Rin Krop from Two Year Eternity, and we got Sarasa Watanabe from Kageki Shoujo. And the runner up for Best Girl is. Let me just see what it is here. Roxy from Mushoku Tensei. I love Roxy. Yeah, she is, she's a really good character. So the main, the, the biggest winner of this competition is actually a tie. A tie. Oh between, my! It's I think it's yeah, never happened before. A tie. A best girl. 
And honestly, the results are not all that surprising. Uh, we got Komi from Komi-san and Hori Kyoko in Hori Mia. Yay! I can only I like pick one song. to go so. the judges. And do you guys, Caroline, do you want to be the arbiter and decide who actually wins? Or are we just going with a tie? I feel like that would not be fair considering okay, fair I'm the enough. one that nominated Hori. <laughs> ah, gotcha. I mean, well, then, I mean, so. Komi I can't even communicate, so I don't even know how she's going to get on. She, she can't even get on stage and give her award out or you know, give her speech. I mean, so, she really has to. She's so nervous. Hoi is just going to kick she, her, and she's going to fall off, and she'll just be like, I'm good with it. All she needs to do is her is her little pose, and that would be more than enough for people to start I mean, applauding. She's just going to crouch a bit under the podium, and her eyes are going to poke out. She's going to have a little cat ears, <laughs> cat ears. everyone will just swoon, and uh, <laughs> that'll be it. <laughs> It's pretty shocking to have a tie though, on it. Yeah, that's pretty exciting though. It, it, but, it, but I agree with these results. Komi is Komi, Hori is Hori. So I will take that. I probably should have let the poll run until there was no tie anymore, but I didn't notice there was a tie until I closed it. So that was my mistake. Let's but, you know. just be a lesson to you, listener, who's like, oh, so many people vote. Like, what's the point? Well, it's always, always Jujutsu Kaisen anyway. Like, why even bot? No, you could have had a say in this. You could have been the hero we needed. But no, you dropped the ball, and now we have to live with this. Thank you. You guys are acting as if a tie is a bad thing. Yeah, well, I mean, it's objectively no longer a best girl. It's just like these two are kind girls. of the bestest girl. <laughs> Leave it to Mason to blame the listeners. To what I do best. That's all I'm good I for, feel- actually. I feel like Mizuho should have been farther up, to be honest. I mean, she was my pick, but that's okay. I don't I'm not surprised. Who, I don't know who I picked here. I, I really don't know. But uh, maybe probably Roxy. I thought she was awesome. So, no, I probably picked Rin because I loved that. Like I said, I loved the Rin goo goo thing, but it might have been Roxy. Anyway, uh, moving on. This is where we get to, some, to the... Uh, not the important awards, but the the bigger the bigger prizes, I think, or the genre awards. You know, that's we're kind of escalating as we go, and then we'll get to the best overall. But another category that does contain Jujutsu Kaisen, probably the most competitive category of of so far that we've had, because there's so many good shows in it, is Best Action Adventure, which is you know there's always a lot of great shows in Best Action Adventure, and it's this is no exception. So getting us started off here with the nominees. The nominees for Best Action Adventure are 86, Attack on Titan, The Final Season Part 1. It also wins the nominate the award for the longest title. Uh, Dr. Stone, Stone Wars, Jujutsu Kaisen, Jobless Reincarnation, Re-Zero Season 2 Part 2, Skate the Infinity, The Ita Den Deities No Only Peace, uh... To Your Eternity, and Vivi Fluorite Eyes Song. So, I mean, that's almost like the best anime of the year list right there, honestly. So, this is a pretty uh, long, pretty big uh, category, and I don't know. The winner of this category might win Best Anime of the Year. You just never know. And the winner of Best Action Adventure is... Attack on Titan. The final season, part one. So, um, yeah, Aaron Yeager was going to come up on stage and accept the award, but he uh, is taking a bath for the first time in four years right now. So <laughs> it's very, we don't want to disturb him. It's a monumental moment. So. Yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen. Uh, it wasn't particularly close, but Jujutsu Kaisen was the runner-up with 19% of the vote, and Attack on Titan had 26% of the vote. So pretty much just stomping out Jujutsu Kaisen right there. Um, how do you guys feel about this category? Who did you pick? Are you surprised? Oh, well, I am glad that Attack on Titan came out on top over Jujutsu Kaisen because, of course, so many awards have already gone to them, and Attack on Titan is just massive. It is probably one of the biggest <laughs> franchises of the last Massive five years. Ever. You know? Biggest. What other it's, large type Titanic. adjectives that you could <laughs> <laughs> Uh yeah, it's not surprising. I I I 
don't know if I would pick any of the other ones above it. Uh, you would love to have, you know, part two and whatever additional stuff they have to see the full picture of it. But what it did in part one made it more, I don't know, action slash adventure than the other ones. And it's a little tough putting them together because it really wasn't so much an adventure in the same way like Jealous Reincarnation was of traveling somewhere, but it it succeeded where it needed to, and it's it's just good. It's just good TV, so no surprise. It was pretty interesting that you got Jujutsu Kaisen, who was making a statement here in this Oscars, goes up against Attack on Titan, and Attack on Titan just comes and sticks its Titan-sized foot right on Gojo's throat, and it's just like, no, we're still here. <laughs> we're still the best. We're Attack on Titan. We've been the best for six years, seven years, and here we are. So and it's kind of true. You know, Attack on Titan has been a staple in anime since, since what, 2014 or something? So yeah, it's pretty, uh pretty tremendous run that Attack on Titan has, has had. And, and, the, and the second part of the final season is no exception. <laughs> so, I mean, I think Attack on Titan is a very interesting case of its popularity because, of course, it was you know, Titanic, as we said, when it first came out with the first season and then waited such a long time for the second season, that second season kind of did not get the best, uh, you know, like it did not have as much of a uh, a fan base as the first season did. And even then people started thinking, hmm, Attack on Titan's kind of overrated, don't you think? And then it just kept on getting better and even bigger than it was before. Yeah. So, yeah, very interesting case with Attack on Titan. And I would kind know- of the Let's go ahead, sorry. I would note that the Ita Den deity is known only peace. I don't know how it keeps making it into these polls, but it barely managed one percent. <laughs> so, so um, so one that? of our nom- nominators definitely loved that loved show. Ita Den deities, yeah. I mean, we also had a nominator that voted jobless reincarnation for every category. So, not naming really? names, yeah, but it was like, come on, come on, come on. Anyway, uh, just this this category just was emblematic of 2021. Just a Mappa show beating up another Mappa show. Just Mappa all the way down. I wonder w- what will come of that. Uh, <laughs> next category? Yes. All right. What is the next category? Next category is Best Comedy. So, yeah, good stuff. The nominations are Don't Toy With Me, Miss Nagatoro, Fruits Basket, The Final Season, Horimiya, Kaginato, Komi Can't Communicate, Mirako-chan, My Senpai is Annoying, Pui Pui Molkar, Your Camp Season 2, and Zombie Land Saga Revenge. I know what Maze is pulling for. Oh, you already know, like unironically what I'm pulling for, but my say has none of that because the runner-up is Horimiya with 18.4% of the vote. I'll take that. That's respectable. And the winner... With nineteen point three percent, just just a margin above it, just a couple votes, is Comey can't communicate. So we got a little rivalry going between Comey and Hori, between best I girl, best so. comedy, like they're there's your, neck and neck. Yeah, there's your tiebreaker right there. Exactly. Um, obviously, obviously, Puri Puri Molkar is the best comedy. Oh, well, it's the best show of this batch, and it is comedic, and therefore it's my favorite comedy. Well, it didn't it's get, so how good. The, how the fuck? I, I'm puzzled by these results, um, honestly, because I thought Fruits Basket was, like, the shit. Um, is it a good, a good comedy, drama? Though? There is comedic moments in it. I wouldn't really call it a comedy, though. Yeah. At well. the best, it's a dramedy. Well, uh-huh. we'll see uh-huh. how it okay. does in the next category, which is the drama slice of life one. But I guess, but like people, people when they vote, they're not thinking, "Well, Fruits Basket's not really a comedy." You know, they're just picking their favorite show. So it's like maybe. So it so... is different. Each, you know, each award show does it differently. Some are, some could see this as which of these shows was the funniest or the most comedically talented, and vote on that. Or these are all comedies. Which of these is just across the board the yeah. best? And we can't regulate that as well um as you know each person kind of has their own opinion of how they go into it so uh yeah there is really no right way but i agree with caroline where it's fruits basket is a good show it's not really a comedy in the same way comey is or no. Poi Molkar is just the best show of the whole year but 
And I'm kind of surprised by Miruko-chan because, I mean, I only watched a couple episodes of it, but I wasn't really getting haha comedy. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's, uh, I mean, Fruits Basket, according to my anime list, is the sixth best sixth best anime ever, which is like wow. sh- which is shocking, and it got dead last in this poll. So that's why I'm surprised with only three percent. So I don't know. Maybe maybe people are like, oh, a Fruits Basket's not really a comedy. I have no idea. I don't know what happened there. It just shit the bed. That's what you call <laughs> choking in the moment. That's the Atlanta Falcons in the Super Bowl right there. That's okay. comedy. <laughs> Brutal. Or as they say, comedy. 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 Oh, my goodness. Moving wow. out. Moving Did you on. just come up with that? No, he's been preparing <laughs> yes, that for weeks. Sadly. I was practicing all week. <laughs> yeah, he was. All right, Caroline. Let's see if Fruits what Basket do does think? better in this category. Oh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, and this category is best drama slash slice of life. And I am glad that we kind of put those two together because a, a lot of times the dramas are a bit slice of life and vice versa. I guess that's true. I guess. Okay. So let's talk the nominees. We have Beastars season two, Roots Basket, the final season, Hori Mia once again, <laughs> uh, Nomad Megalobox season two, Odd Taxi, Sunny Boy, Super Cub, we got Taisho Otome Fairy Tale, Two Year Eternity, Tokyo Revengers, and Wonder Egg Priority. And the runner up for Best Drama slash Slice of Life is Fruits Basket, the oh, final season. There it is. It did not get the winning vote, unfortunately, but the winning uh, drama slash Slice of Life is Odd Taxi with 27% of the votes. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that. It actually uh, was a little bit further ahead actually, with the votes. Fruits Basket got uh, 19.7%. So was an was a clear winner there. Yeah. Um, Odd you... Taxi, good. Odd that, Taxi. That's, that's all you need to say. <laughs> yeah, Odd Taxi was a really good show. And um, this was a pretty like heavy, he- he- like a top heavy category, uh, which was pretty surprising, honestly, to me. You know, the top three anime in this category make up what like what percentage here a pretty high percent um about 62 percent went to just the top three shows so it didn't leave really any room for the rest and it shows i mean pretty much only only three anime broke 10 percent in the category so pretty much everybody just got crushed by uh hoity mia fruits basket and odd taxi but odd taxi just swallowed up the category so I have to say, I'm a little bit surprised that Two Year Eternity got so little votes. It only got 6.1%. And that was, yeah. like, I'd be surprised if not, if like the majority of people who watched that show were not welling up with tears at some point. I thought Two Year Eternity was great, but you know what? It had a really like weak last arc, I thought. Um, and maybe just it being arc based in general, like you had these more like vignettes in the way where instead of like a full drama to like tie it all together and like connect with Maybe. all the characters i don't know all i know is the few people who uh voted with me on super cub you were the real mvps that was so slice of life that was I, peak i will say that i don't know what the hell uh taisho otome fairy tale is but apparently most people were feeling the same way because it it, it was sub one percent in the poll so i don't know what the hell that is the last time I saw a Taisho Otome show was that baseball Taisho Yaku Musume anime, and that was not good. All right, moving on to a category that is good, best fantasy slash isekai. Really, this is like, I think it's best isekai pretty much. Pretty much everything in here is an isekai except for a couple of ex- exceptions. So, uh, And I don't know, it seems like isekai and fantasy, they got grouped together because they're essentially synonymous at this point. You can't really separate the two. Um, There's more isekai shows than there are pure fantasy shows. I mean, it's just ridiculous at this point, but I I do enjoy the isekai anime. They are usually to my liking. So the nominations for best isekai anime of 2021, or fantasy, I guess I should add, are Banished from the Heroes Party, I Decided to Live a Quiet Life in the Countryside, Jobless Reincarnation Season 1, ReZero Season 2, Part 2, Magic Saints Power is Omnipotent, Sunny Boy. Saints Magic Power. <laughs> Saints Magic. What did I say? 
Magic, Magic Saints. Power. It's close enough. It's I'm got doing, all the right I'm words. doing too many things <laughs> at once. Um, Sunny Boy, the time I was reincarnated as a slime, season two, and Suki Michi, Moonlit Fantasy. And the winner of Best Fantasy Isekai Anime of 2021 is Jobless Reincarnation. Not close. Uh, this is the most one of the most lopsided categories of the night. Um, Jobless Reincarnation won the poll with 43% of the vote, which is just ridiculous. Followed up by, and you know, just absolutely distant second with 50, with almost 16%. ReZero Season Two Part Two. I mean, really, the most of the field was uh, had got got some representation. Suki Michi uh, only got one vote, <laughs> which is pretty. You pretty, can't even see sad. it in the pie chart. Yeah, it's so small you can't really see it on Twitch. But yeah, but um. That's that's life, you know. Jobless Reincarnation is a monster-sized show, so it's clearly clearly um, more popular than ReZero now at this point. So I think it's a mix of ReZero is kind of not outdated, but it came out so long ago it felt yeah. like. So you have the recency bias, and Jobless Reincarnation got two cores in this year, part one it's and true. two. So yeah, kind of sandwiching the beginning and ends, and just people being going nuts over it. Like it makes sense. And it is a pretty decent fantasy isekai. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's t no one was surprised by this, except the one guy who's like, whoa, what about Tsukimichi? I thought everyone loved that show. <laughs> God, yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> honestly, and um, I actually, personally, I like Jobless Reincarnation a little better than ReZero. ReZero is a little too verbose for me. They just talk a little too much. And, and uh, I Wait, don't know. But... And you think ReZero has less talking? No, way more talking. Oh yeah, okay. I thought. Sorry, I yeah, it's too much. It too, like, too much talking. Too much talking, not enough doing in ReZero for me. But I do like it. It's it's a great show. But and I would and I would probably I would probably recommend it. But Jobless Reincarnation probably deserved to win this one. I feel like. Yeah, I would say so. Anything else from this category, guys? No, and I think it's the same way. Where it's like, oh, if we're looking at my favorite in this category, I way prefer Sunny Boy to Jobless Reincarnation. But as a fantasy isekai, if someone's like, well, I love this category, I'm not going to be like, well, this is kind of a fantasy, so like I wouldn't recommend it. Jobless Reincarnation was the best. That's why it won. No more than Are that. You kidding? Sunny Boy is the isekaiest. They were basically oh isekaiing every episode, Mason. Exactly. What happened in that anime? I still don't know. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Uh, we, we should have a category real. for like most difficult to interpret. Understand? So there was um, the uh, Mason Award. Sunny Boy. <laughs> there was uh, yeah, Godzilla Singular Point. Wonder Egg Priority. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, that gives me all of them. Just keep on legging <laughs> on. It's my favorite. Evangelion 4.0. Oh, yes, God. yes, load uh -huh. it up. Yep, yep. Give me more. What else you got? <laughs> no, nothing else. We're done. I don't even understand oh, what we're talking how about, about. How about we have the Twitch chat to come up with uh, funny new uh, categories that we will definitely not use, but it will be a good laugh. We might <laughs> use. They're very funny. All right. Well, speaking of very funny, uh, best sports. I, I, don't, I don't, to be honest with you, I feel like this category barely exists, should exist. So they're just not, there's no. Sports, the sports anime genre has been terrible the last few years. Yeah, and I'll shut up now. What, that's what happens sometimes. Hey, maybe next year's a chance, you know? We'll see. Uh, best sports, the nominees are Backflip, Nomad, Megalobox Season 2, Remain, Gate the Infinity, and Uma Musume Pretty Derby Season <laughs> 2. And the winner is don't, Initial don't D. Be don't be chocolate. The horse girls are Sorry. not bad. Sorry. <laughs> In second place, with 25.5% of the vote, we have Nomad Megalobox Season 2. And the winner, with 26.8%, getting its just desserts, we have Skate the Infinity. Unbelievable. Whoa! Oh. It does have a good theme song. <laughs> What? Are you so kidding? Stylish. Remain did not win? Are Remain you didn't win? How can this be? I'm so glad Remain was crushed by Uma Musume. And I'm <laughs> upset that Backflip didn't crush it as well. Backflip Head was genuinely some impressive animation and sequences. And 
I think is slept on. But uh, yeah, I had my vote for Nomad Megalobox, but I'd, Skate is fine too. No, you know, no complaints. They say that sports is drama, and I agree. But I was. I would borderline argue that Remain was like not even a sports anime. That was definitely more of a drama than a sports anime. Like they pretty much only played sports for maybe one episode in that whole show, and the rest of it that was, was just against like five year olds. <laughs> they wanted to be a soap opera more than a sports I just, show. I hated that anime. I hate how at the end of it they were just like they had like this moral victory because they scored one goal, even though they lost like twenty five to one. And I'm just like that is such a loser <laughs> mentality. That's such a everybody gets a participation trophy bullshit. Like, you got crushed. You ought to be, like, shameful. But no. It's like, oh, we got one goal. Yay. I'm like, that is, that to me, that is just terrible. I, I just can't get over that. Clearly, I can't. I mean, I wanted to Ugh. have it in the Pooper Scooper Award, but somebody had to nominate it for best sport, so that got taken out of the Pooper Scooper. Well, it wasn't going to us- it wouldn't Both have of won. you in the chat says abstain technically did win the best yeah, sports it did. <laughs> with 37 yeah. percent almost so <laughs> yeah people aren't watching yeah these. i get that and there was a lot more worse sports on here like we didn't even talk about like sayonara football or uh the fuck puree or a like Ugh. i have no idea what those are <laughs> the fucking was, hockey uh, anime oh my yeah. god oh yes i remember <laughs> so i uh, that was oh my god so that was probably in the category for most disappointing anime, if we if there is such a thing. So maybe we should I mean, ship, Nomad shake it. Nomad was up. good. I thought Nomad yeah. was 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 probably a better anime than Skate, but Skate was Skate I think was, was Skate was, was more fun. focused on the sport, I guess, in Skate, but in, I mean because Nomad was more of a drama. Yeah, they were, I mean they were fine. So, sports is dead, but I want Aww. it to come back. Me too, in a big way. We got some dancing shows coming up. I like dancing. Dancing is fun. You got to wait a whole hope. year until MF Ghost comes out. <laughs> God. Why do they announce what? it so far in advance? Yeah. It just makes it worse. So, anyway, um, who's up? Uh, K- uh, be Caroline. Me. And the category next is Best Film. So the nominees are Evangelion, 3.0 plus 1.0, Thrice Upon a Time, we have Gintama, The Final, Mobile Suit Gundam, Hathaway's Flash, we got Demon Slayer, Mugen Train, and Shoujo Kageki Review Starlight Movie. And the, <laughs> uh, what, what did I say that wrong? No, it's just, no. No, it's, it's just a okay. handful. You got it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. And the runner up is Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0. And that's a, that's kind of. Uh, not all that shocking compared to the other nominee on this list. Of course, the winner of best film is Demon Slayer Mugen Train with 50% of the vote. Is that Califina? Is it Califina that sings that theme? Because all their songs sound the exact same, and I can pretty much identify them just by the way they sing. I'm going to look this uh, up. You mean just like Demon Slayer's episodes? Oh, my God. Did you just take a swipe? <laughs> I did. I, you guys are wrong on this. Everyone who voted for this, the fifty point six percent of you, the one, this is like the most like, like runaway victory of the entire night. Uh, you're all wrong. You guys clearly <laughs> need to watch better movies. Oh my goodness, I'm so upset. I'm so sad. Are you beside but it's, yourself? It's okay. No, not really, because really every other thing is either a sequel or like some like obscure thing. Actually, no, they're all, like, sequels to long-running series. So, like, Demon Slayer is, like, the most approachable. And Shugeki, or Shoujo Kigeki is the best movie of the year, without question. But it's not kind of out yet, so it makes sense that people didn't watch it. But when Review Starlight movie does come out and you can watch it legally, please do. It is amazing. I strongly recommend it. That 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 singer was actually Lisa, and... She they say she sounds exactly like Califina. I don't know. Okay, I stand corrected. Yeah, I don't know. Mugen Train. I just feel like probably nobody watched any of these except Mugen Train, and then they voted for Mugen Train because that was what That's they liked. How it works. Yeah. And also, Mugen Train had the most amount of marketing. Like I feel like. Oh yeah. In no key, yeah. Terms, like, I feel like people, even if they were not in anime circles, heard about this movie, and compared to the others, I'm sure kind of got lost in obscurity. 
I don't know. Evo was good. Evo was really good. Watch that too. I think the title Hathaway's Flash sounds sounds dope as shit. I kind of want to watch that just because of the title. It's not about streaking mitts. Get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, that's okay. You know, like, I, I'm not actually surprised at all. You know, People later this year, this. I'm getting married in Iceland, and I will be naked 83% of that trip. Did we need to know that? No, but he was talking about streaking, so I just offered it. You know, <laughs> uh, I need a pie of chart of your clothes status. 83% naked, 12% just boxers, 2% just socks, and the rest just a hat. I, I Well, you know, I'll let you, I'll give you that pie chart when, after the trip's over. I can't say Excellent. for sure, but we're going to, I know we're, I know we've planned like at least four hot springs, so I'm going to be naked a lot. It's what you do. All right. And next up is best studio of 2021. We got a lot of great studios in the anime. Too many, <laughs> actually. Um, <laughs> I, I've been calling for fewer anime for years now. I think that anime has overextended. It has too many, too many anime, not enough people working on the anime. Um, but you know, whatever. The cat. This is pretty much a list of all relevant anime of all relevant studios at this point. I feel like uh, the nominees for best studio of 2021 are Studio Bind, Studio Bones, Studio Brains Base, Studio Cloverworks, Studio Madhouse, Studio Mappa. Studio OLM, Studio TMS Entertainment, and Studio Wit Studio. And the winner, which is is really not going to be that shocking for anybody who's been paying attention at all to the last year, is indeed Studio Mappa. There we go. With 37% of the vote, Studio Mappa wins the poll. The runner-up, with just a laughably distant second, is Wit Studio. I don't even know what Wit Studio did last year. What did they even do? Anything? Bueller? I can't. I don't. Uh, I don't remember what did they studios do. Vivi. Do. Vivi. Let me look I think this they up. Did Vivi. Um, Vivi was I indeed Wit Studio. That's correct. I don't remember everything that they did because. I didn't vote for Wit Studio. I voted for Bones. I think Bones really had a lot of variety on their plate, and it was nice. They did Skate, they did Vanitas, they did Super Crooks, they did My Hero Season 5, they did Godzilla SP, and they did the Bungo Stray Dogs spinoff. So, like, no matter what anime fan you were, I feel like they did some show that was up your alley. And they all look a little different, and all had just a good vibe to them. And I just tend to like the way Bones shows move. So, that was my vote. Um, Wit also did whew, Cyber Brains, like a one episode music thing, and they did Ranking of Kings, which like kind of doesn't count, but they did still do it. So yeah, they did Vivi, and that was it. And I think people were like, wow, her eyes are super detailed. I'm going to vote for that. You know, do you know what <laughs> I think happened? I think Wit is just memorable in people's minds because they did um, Attack on Titans Attack on Titan. through 3, and they're like, oh, they're probably yeah. doing part 4. <laughs> yep. Attack on Titan, and people will just think they'd probably did attack on titans current season even though they didn't that was mappa which is and mappa will win this next year too because they've got like 12 anime that i, I don't know how that studio has, the best studio must have a lot of people working at it because there's a lot of fucking anime coming out from that next year so all right well i almost feel like we should give this category to caroline because she wanted to bury a few anime so badly Oh, the, come on. No, I didn't. Oh, come on. You He's rolling you out the it. red carpet of hatred for you to just you, gallantly stride over. You had it out I for wasn't too hateful, was I? Remain. You wanted a realist hero, okay. which bit you in the ass, because now you got to watch the second season, which I think is hilarious. I will find some way to get out of it. I will create well, plans to get out of it. <laughs> maybe we'll we'll wait until we'll, we'll, we'll make it one of the last anime of that season that we review. That way it'll be dubbed by then. How about that? That'll make it easy. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I feel like I have a, a little bit of a, a degree of separation so I can just close my eyes and ev effectively stop watching it. When can <laughs> we just pull the card of, like, we get to the end of the season and we're like, no one really cares about it. Maybe we just, like, let it fall yeah. into the ether just and no down. one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, we'll go see. For it. Um, but if you so insist, I will announce the Pooper Scooper Award, a.k.a. the worst of 2021. And the nominees are yes, Battle Captain. Game in 5 Seconds, 
X Arm, How oh a Realist Hero Rebuilt God. the Kingdom, The Promised Neverland Season 2, and Redo of Healers. So many great ones in there. But there's only one that can be the worst. There can be only and the one. Wor- <laughs> there can only be one. The worst of 2021 is The Promised Neverland Season 2. Just based on pure disappointment. Otherwise, <laughs> X-Arm would have totally won. X-Arm is the, uh, is the runner-up. Uh, and in fact, uh, X- uh, Promised Neverland pulled quite ahead with 70 or 42% of the votes. Yep. X-Arm got about 30%. I gotta say... And I'm actually kind of surprised can, <laughs> a little bit. Can we, can we take a step back and just evaluate this for a moment? And let me ask you. Does How a Realist Hero Rebuilt the Kingdom really deserve to be in here it's bad in in your heart it's a bad it's not a good sh- it's not it's not offensive but i'll say it it's is below bad. average but is it I one feel of like the no one hates realist hero as much as caroline and i do i feel Nobody? like you do too okay i was okay i'm glad for that wow. At least you got my back. i feel you like you and like... i are in the minority i feel like most people are like this show is good to just all right and I think the show is abysmal. I think it's wow. not even so bad it's good. I despise... Realist Hero was the worst show I watched last year. Wow. There was nothing redeeming about it. And I... I, I, I did not I, find I, a I single thing here. interesting about it. Well, let me it. ask you a question, Mason. Are you just are you just infuriated at Caroline then that she talked so much shit that you guys got trolled into watching the second season? No. I mean, like that's so just. I, I think I think most people genuinely don't mind the show, and I think it's my job as a reviewer to prove to them how little content is here. Like, yeah. <sighs> what if the second season is like really good? Would that be Would that be awesome? Would that shock you? That would be doubt that's even stunning. Possible. I mean, we have what is it? The Genius Prince's Guide this this season, which seems to be I have not seen a single episode, but from what I've heard, is just realist hero, but like done right. Like that shouldn't be the case. It shouldn't. There shouldn't be a, but done right. That's a sign that you messed up real bad. And if another show is just coming in and showing you how it's done, I don't know. I don't know. It was bad. It was worse than Tokyo Revengers, which was also Garbo. It was worse oh, than Our Last Crusade, which was Garbo. Worse. Like, I don't know. It was just contentless. And maybe it's just because we were forced to watch it, and you know that imbues a certain sense of this face that other people are like, oh, you're just being harsh on it, but... I I feel like Battle Game in Five Seconds wasn't awful. I mean, it was kind of one of those, you know, standard, uh, uh, what's it called? What's that? Fight to the Death Death Battle Royale. (laughs) It's like one of those standard Battle Royales. It wasn't really bad, bad, but, I mean, it's not on the level of X-Arm, Realist Hero, a redo of Healer, and certainly not Promised Neverland, just based on the disappointment that it was. The at least Promised Neverland was like an entertaining train wreck. Like, you could see it just fall apart in so many ways and be like, this... Like, I was more engaged with that. So, and it had Phil. I mean, that's a standalone enough Phil. to make it not a pooper scooper, so... I think it's kind of... I, I do think it's interesting that The Promised Neverland, out of all these choices, had the best production values out of it. I mean, let's forget about the one minute of montage of, like, 20 volumes of manga. But outside of that, it looked good. It sounded good. The story was okay if you just forget about how they, you know, volumes. shit the bed with it. So, Yeah. Interesting choice, but I, I mean, I'm surprised by the fact that X Arm did not at least tie with it, or closer, closer to a tie. Yeah, okay, X Arm was better than yeah. so many of these shows. <laughs> but uh, uh, shall we get to the grand finale here? Yeah, Mitz, do you want to do the honors? No, no, Mason. I believe it's your turn. Oh, okay. it's Caroline's turn. Well, oh, well it, it, we, sw- we swapped. So. Oh, you swapped. Okay, yeah. A little switcheroonie. You guys insisted yes. I talk about the worst of 2021. It's kind of what we do. The best anime of oh, 2021. Oh, my God. So th- this, is, this, this, this is a big one. Let me just say, this is a list you should pay attention to because this is like, if you didn't watch anything from last year, write these down. Here's the list. Watch this list. You're good. Yeah. We're seeing the predictions roll in from the Twitch chat. You love to see it. And the nominees are 
Attack on Titan, the final season, part one. Jujutsu Kaisen. Jobless Reincarnation. Odd Taxi. Sunny Boy. SSSS Dinazanon. To Your Eternity. And Wonder Egg Priority. And your best anime of 2021 is Odd Taxi. Dancing, dancing. This was a close one. It It was. 24% of the vote Odd Taxi won with 22.6. The runner up was Attack on Titan Final Season Part 1. So, good stuff. You know, I, I was hating on you guys. I was like, oh, you guys can't pick anything right. Mm, I take it back. You guys can pick them. Odd Taxi, good. I agree. I it, it was really good. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. You know, um, having seen pretty much all of these, except the only one on here I haven't seen is SSSS Die in a Xenon, which really got no votes anyway. Um, I've seen all of these, and I have to say that I pretty much agree with the order. I think that, honestly, I think that the order... As the poll went, Ta- Todd Taxi was probably the best anime of last year. Attack on Titan was probably next, and then Jobless Reincarnation, and then Jujutsu Kaisen. That's uh, two year eternities in there too, but it did have a shitty I feel last like arc. Eternity. Okay, well, I, mm. I feel like everybody at least watches at least part of the first part of Two Year Eternity, and that first episode is amazing. Well, yeah, the I first, feel like yeah. I feel like it should be a little bit higher, but I can see how this, you know, played out. I, I, it makes sense. If Two Year Eternity had ended after the third arc, it would have been much better, but it didn't. So, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's kind of shocking to see Odd Taxi win. I think some people on Twitch were surprised, and because well, did, well, didn't Jujutsu Kaisen Nora and Hedora Attack on win Titan. last time? Yes, it did. I feel like you guys, being the audience, usually pick the best of really well and go against like the hyper popular grain sometimes and i i enjoy it i love when you guys pull through um i mean my favorites obviously were a taxi sunny boy monogatari pui pui molkar and wonder egg priority were like all in contention at one point in time before i think odd taxi and sunny boy really kind of pulled away at the end so uh no i i like it i like all these stuff it's good good list Yep, and um, Odd Taxi is just such a short show, too. Pretty much anybody that hasn't seen it should go watch it. You know, it's got a great plot twists at the end. It's it's interesting. It's certainly not your run-of-the-mill show. And, yeah. you know, and, in, and in anime gets, there's so much anime every year. People don't realize there's, like, almost 300 anime that come out a year. It's it's unbelievable how many come out. And there's a lot and of the same. So many shit. of the shitty ones went to summer of 2021. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's, there's so much samey stuff in anime sometimes. Uh, even like Jujutsu Kaisen is pretty samey. It's just like a shonen fighting anime. But uh, that's not to say it's not good because it is. But you know, Odd Taxi was so unique in e- pretty much every way that for that reason alone, it deserves to be considered. Um, you know, it's just. Uh, a special show amongst the amongst the group of other great shows. So, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. You know, other than the fact that it's just fucking great. If you want to hear, if you want to hear hear our review on Odd Taxi, uh, I'm gonna look up one which episode we reviewed that in. What do you guys think? Are you pleased with the results? Yeah, I mean, I'm glad that um, something like Odd Taxi won over Attack on Titan, which honestly is in, uh, an amazing turn of events. As much as I loved Attack on Titan, I feel like Odd Taxi deserved the win here. Odd Taxi was reviewed on episode 596, and we all gave it a four and a half or higher. So, there you go. Oh, boy. I am very pleased. What was our highest, like, average um, show we reviewed on the podcast? It's got to be Odd Taxi. It's got to be Odd Taxi. Uh, uh, To Your Eternity got a four. Uh, Heike Monogatari got a four. A taxi got the four and a half. Yep. Then we had a smattering of like three and a half. So, yeah, that that about aligned. Zombieland Saga also got a four. So. 
Yeah, because I good only gave good. I only gave three four and a halfs or fives last year, and that was one. And that was the only five I gave last year was Odd Taxi. Oh, can you see what was the worst one that we reviewed in terms of our scores? Um, oh, of course, yeah. that's so easy to do. Um, it already knows. I I I think I, mean, I, I think I see it right here. We have a tie <laughs> okay. for the worst. Um, <laughs> one was Remain with a one and a half. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, which was a much more even smattering of um, Caroline and Mitz gave it a two and I gave it a one and a half. And then we have another one and a half in Realist Hero where yep. Mitsuki gave it a three and Caroline and I both gave it the lowest possible yeah. half a point. Yeah, it, I don't it, know oh. how you gave that a three. Still, I it don't was just know average. How it's I just thought it was a. I just thought it was a bland, average show. It wasn't like offensive. Like, geez, a, a point five. I don't even think I really give point fives. Yeah, like the most boring you, thing you, I've ever. You seen. didn't know that that existed until I came along. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reserving like ones and stuff for shit that is fucking terrible. And the only thing I've given a one to in like years is listeners. That's pretty much all. And you didn't even give a one to Yasuhime. You're mm, Yasuhime. Mm, well, yeah, I don't even know where that is on here, but it's way down. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't even find that. Oh There's my so goodness, many, it was still so a good year. It was a good year. I. Uh, <laughs> it was a good year. <laughs> it was fun. A lot of surprises. A lot of just good shows. Unique shows. It, mm-hmm. it, if people want to check out for. the. Uh, review history it's on our website you can click the review button on the top of aaapodcast.com now i know you'll do that after you click aaapodcast.com slash join because you don't want to listen to people grunt and scream at the gym you know but then you can check out our reviews if you're curious to see what we hate and what we like you know not that our opinions are better than yours but they are on here for this (laughs) for everybody to look at are we able to make all like the broken down results available to everyone for the Oscars 2021? Um, I can put it in the show notes. People that support the podcast can get the show notes. So Yeah, we'll put it there. It'll be on here for you. All right. So I am feeling pretty good. You know, there were a lot of people voted. I didn't think there was anything specifically just flat out just silly. And like there have been prior years where we've had people nominate stuff that is just garbo. Um, and this year I really didn't feel that way, you know, and I'm pretty happy about how, about how things went overall. And, um, the only thing that I think there's only one snub of the year that really stood out to me and that's it. No one nominated fruits basket for best of 2021. I really think, you know, like after watching pancake just lose her shit, over and over again and then showing it to her friends that visit while they're here and they lose their shit and I'm always like is Fruits Basket really that good? And then I checked my my anime list and it's like you know 400,000 people gave it an average of a 9. I'm just like well I guess it is that good but you know it didn't really seem to make a difference. Nobody it was an afterthought I guess for most people so I don't know. Anybody have anything? I I haven't finished it. So I'm, I'm, I'm working my way through season 2. I'm almost done with season 2 so We'll see when I finally finish it. <laughs> Do you guys have any any other things, any other anime that you thought got left out somewhere? I really wish Two Year Eternity won something. But too bad. Yeah, it didn't win anything, that's true. But at least it got nominated a few times. So, and it didn't, it wasn't like it was an anime that got zero votes. You know? Mm-hmm. So... How about you, Mason? Good talk. award show, guys. Yeah, it was, it was fun. It's always it's always a good excuse to break out the bow tie and fancy uh, pasta. Fuck, ties fuck this tie. And... Yeah, exactly. Fuck oh, this... are we going to the after party fuck now? This no, fair no, no we're tie. getting dressed for the hentai episode. So, oh, dressed, yeah. So, I, I how do I pull this? Whoop! I, I, Whoop. Hentai time. <laughs> I, I just have one more question, and that is, um, what were your guys' personal favorites of last year? I'm just curious to know what you thought was your favorite show. Um, hmm. That's hard. Um, Hori Mia was one that I was looking forward to for years to come out as an anime, so that was one of my most anticipated watches, and it was good. Um, to Your Eternity, also great. Uh, Attack on Titan is always killing it. I think those would probably be my top three. If just off the top of my head. Mason? Yeah, I kind of ran through mine earlier, but 
it, it would be a toss up for best of the year between Sunny Boy and Odd Taxi. I think Odd Taxi just is a little bit more memorable and easy to recommend, even if Sunny Boy is more of a Mason experience and show. Um, I know you guys think I'm memeing, but Pui Pui Molkar is still one of the biggest surprises, and I enjoy it. And uh, Wonder Egg, despite its botched ending of unbelievable degrees, still was such a fun experience and enlightening and insightful. Just, I would call it a joy ride, but it wasn't full of that much joy, but I had a blast watching <laughs> it. So those just, yeah, they're good. For me, um, I look back and two anime really stand out to me from last year. One of them was Java's Reincarnation. I just really enjoyed it from end to end of what we've seen so far. But I, I really think the best anime last year was Odd Taxi. And that's how I personally feel, not just like as a critic or whatever. It's It just um, had a lot of surprises in there, and I just loved so many things about it. So Odd Taxi, I think it, I think I, I, I think we made the right choices this year. So I'm, I'm pretty mm-hmm. pleased. Yeah. Odd Taxi is the kind of show that is why you keep on watching anime. You wade through the muck and the crud and just the worst of the worst to find these gems where you're like, this is, is anime. what I'm here for. Yeah. And that's that's why we still do this. And we appreciate you guys. Once again, all the guest podcasts that help nominate these things. It's, it's, it's nothing without you guys. So thank you so much. And that's another year of the Oscars. Thank you to Caroline. Thank you to Mason. Thank you to everybody who voted. Thank you to all the moms and dads out there. Thank you to all the walrus boys. And thank you to all of you listening at home and, thank you and live. Anime studios. I thank you, uh, all the anime studios. And this is Mitsugi signing off, and we'll see you next week on the Anime Accident Anonymous podcast. Take care, and bye-bye. Don't forget to tip your waitress. Bye-bye. See ya. <laughs>